going on outside we got the white powder all over the ground but hey uh let's go ahead and turn those gloomy clouds i say into some upside down frowns which means we're all going to be smiling together as we break down a whole lot of fun stuff over the next however many minutes uh we gas bag uh my name is brian skaronsky they call me the big kahuna here in the setup and i actually i got the tea to match it today check this out ah very nice very nice very nice yeah very nice very nice uh so yeah, just thought I'd uh, show off the gear and uh, back from a, a little mini like workcation. So, so I'm happy to be Did on the really grind. Work? Did you really work? But it's uh, more than just me. You hear that voice over there? Really work coming in. Uh, that's Travis Big League Berardi. Uh, yeah, I got in a little work, Trav. Of course. Uh, uh, we're gonna showcase that at the very end of the episode. But we got a lot more to get to. Of course, before that, we got the high school softball tournament draw. We're gonna talk about the baseball standings for 
some conferences in and around the area. The Fredericktown Invitational, crappy weather. They still got it in, had some huge performances there. NFL drafts went down this weekend. And then, of course, the Bruins lost last night in Game 7. Yeah, Was it the that. biggest meltdown ever? We will discuss, but let's go ahead and uh, bring in the face to match the voice that you've been hearing here in the background. What's up, Big League? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Another typical very, very crappy weather Monday here in North Central Ohio. I think, what was it, Snow Ohio? That's what we're, we're calling, calling it, it now. Tonight. Uh, it's, very fitting. It's As Justin Timberlake said, it's going to be May, and it's still snowing. It's I know. We were discussing a little bit ago. Today is May Day yes. where normally you know, there's some flowers left yeah. on some porches, some ding-dong ditching, and then, oh, look at what they brought for me. And that, not today. It would be borderline child abuse to send out some youngins into these elements and have them showcase and dropping off some, some plants and stuff. So, uh yeah, not not only not, that, you probably kill the flowers think. too. It's cold out. All around bad. No death needed or necessary today, Trav. Um but yeah, so let's uh begin today's show actually. Let's talk Let's switch things up a little bit. I see that we got the softball tournament. We're supposed to be leading off with that, yes. but let's go ahead and talk about baseball and some yes. of the conference uh, shakeups that we have going down here. And let's uh, let's begin the conversation with the WCAL, mm -hmm. Trav, because this is one of the more intriguing ones in the area that we have right now because there's a few teams that still got a shot at getting a bite of the Big Apple when it's all said and done. Who are they? Well, first, uh, there are teams ranked in – Highly ranked. from the WCAL, uh, we you know the Hillsdale Falcons. They're ranked 13th. However, they lost their two games to Dalton, who is now ranked 17th. So you have a couple teams in there, but the four teams that still have a good chance at winning a conference. You have Norway, you have Hillsdale, you have the defending state champion Wayne Dale, and you have Dalton. Norway nine and one, and then Hillsdale, Wayne Dale, Dalton, Dalton all eight and two. Wow, the only two teams that have played each other so far out of those top four. Wayne Dale swept Dalton to start the season. Other than that, Hillsdale Norway and a game hopefully you will see in a highlight tomorrow if Mother Nature decides to, you know, snap out of it. She probably won't. They play each other twice this week and then Hillsdale's at Wayne Dale next week. More games that you will probably see right here on the OH report and then Dalton also takes on Norway. So this still is going to be played out uh, to determine who will win the conference championship, but also all four teams, 10 plus wins. Norway's 13 and two, Hillsdale's 13 and four, Wayne Dale 11 and six, Dalton 10 and seven. Those are four teams that they could make some noise also in the tournament. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. When you've got four different teams that mm -hmm. still most of them have to shake things out at the end of the season, I mean, it's going to be some really fun baseball yeah. over these last three weeks of the yeah. regular season. Going to be interesting to see who does end up being the top dog. Probably more than one team. I could potentially see even three teams all getting a share of that league title, but that's why they play the games. That's why they throw the first pitch, Trav. Uh, MOAC also... We don't really have a clean-cut favorite just yet, right? We got a couple of teams got to yes. play each other down the stretch here. Yeah, and two more state-ranked teams this time in Division Two. You got Highland, always a state-ranked team. They're at number nine this week. And then those Clear Fort Colts, the Ooh. Fighting Gay Kennedys, they're in there at number 12. But uh, Highland right now, a perfect 10-0 and in conference. Okay. Clear Fork, 9-1. They did drop that one game, the Galleon. But – those two teams meet the last two games of the regular season, mm, which will like determine that. the conference championship. It, 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 I love it how it just works out that these uh, these conference commissioners think they know who's going to win the co it, win it out, Bravo and they usually makers. schedule those games at the end, which is so great. But also, I'm just looking down at the uh, the season leaders as well. Uh, top five pitchers from Clear Fork and Highland. Hmm. Uh, the wow. top uh, was it top four, five of the top uh, four of the five top stolen base getters? Clear Fork and Highland, RBI, Highland and Clear Fork. They, they just have. You're telling me the cream the rises thing. to the crop absolutely. by the end of the thing. Yes, the cream rises to the top, absolutely. But yeah, Highland Clear Fork Galleon is uh, five games back. Ontario six and four. So it's it's going to come down to Highland and Clear Fork. That two game series is going to be so much fun to watch as well. Uh, they aren't in the same district, also. They wouldn't meet, I think, until a possible state Final Four. Mm, and both potential, maybe, I mean, they to got, get there. They have the pieces. Clear Fork has a very, very good pitching staff. Uh, three, like I just said, in the tops. Garrett Hotz, zero ERA, three and one. Hopes. 
Hoax. hoax. We've been corrected. Hoax, yes. I, I, I kind of like Hots better if, yeah, if you wanted hoax. to go with a little well, name he's change. Hot right now. We'll say that. Mm -hmm. Luke Drockton, 0 ERA, 2 and 0. And then our buddy Caden Riddle, Cowboy Caden Riddle, a .5 ERA. He's 4 and 0 with 30 Ks. Then you have Zach Church and Jace Brooks from Highland also, .37, .45. I always say if you have two good pitchers, you got a chance. It gives you a chance because you Deep play run. two games in the tournament. You have your sectional semi and final next week, district semi and final. So if you have two good starters and then maybe a couple other pitchers, you're going to have a chance. Both these teams do. Does anybody still have a chance in the N10 or have the upper Sandusky Rams kind of ran away and put this baby to bed so, a little bit early? Colonel Crawford is the lone team that could probably catch them, but they have three losses. They, The two teams, once again, meet at the end of the regular season, but mm. Crawford's going to have to get some help. Need some help. Because Upper Sandusky has to lose a game. However, Upper has to play carry this week. If the Blue Devils can split with them, it opens the door for Crawford. If Upper Sandusky can take care of business, uh, that would at least – yeah, they, they need to win one to at least clinch a share this week against Carey. If they win two at last series against Crawford, it won't even matter. Yeah, not necessarily that it's meaningless. Still playing for pride. Yeah. You want to have some momentum rolling in the tournament. But as far as the conference standings, they would be put to yeah. rest. And Upper Sandusky, they're the eighth-ranked team in Division Two. They've had a phenomenal year. They're a 17-2 and two. Uh, wow. We were thinking maybe Carey, maybe Colonel Crawford, but sure. now Upper Sandusky has had a very good season, and there's an they're another one of those teams in Division Two that might have you know a say in something. Yeah, keep an eye on them. Uh, also, very similar in the K Mac where Fredericktown they've already got a piece of the pie here. They got a sweep of Northmore, so they yes. put themselves in the driver's seat to clinch the entire thing outright, Trav. And that was a race that we thought would have a couple of different horses in it. But the Freddies, they've proven that they're not just the best team in the conference. They might be the best team in the whole state. Well, they're the second best now. They lost a tough one to Columbus mm. to sales, their first loss. However, they are still the number two team in all of Division Three in the coaches' poll. Eastwood, 16-0. and Fredericktown now 16-1. and But that's neither here or there. They have 24 combined first and second place votes. Eastwood, 28. So... It's very close in the voting and could go either way, but Fredericktown, the Freddies, uh, supposed to play Centerburg today, but we'll, we'll have to find out. Uh, they pretty much, yeah, they've clinched their three games up on Northmore and the Bulldogs of East Knox. They're also getting votes for state ranking, so you still have some teams there. Uh, three teams over 10 wins. We have Fredericktown, yeah. Northmore 14-4, and four, East Knox 11-4. and four. Those two pretty much fighting it out for second place because the Freddies are just rolling right now. You know, that tough loss in the regional last year, I've mentioned this a couple times, where five errors allowed Edison. Mm. Edison to score five runs. What did Edison yeah. end up doing? They took Wayne Dale to extra innings ago, so yep. they were that close to getting there. But, you know, they're playing with that chip on the shoulder. Cade Carpenter is just throwing phenomenal baseball right now in a game you saw live and free last week. Uh, really, th He has the speed for the fastball, but then he shut down, I think it was – 12 of the last 13 batters against Northmore, off-speed pitches got strikeouts. 12 of the last 14 he faced. He finished, I think, with 14 strikeouts in that game. So just having the pitching, another day of pitching. Ben Mass threw a shutout against Northmore earlier in the week, a one nothing victory. So, uh, again, pitching. It gets you far in the tournament, and, again, Fredericktown has that. Yeah, they got a lot of pieces, and they've got an exceptional head coach as well. And it just so happens that we've got him joining us right now. Uh, Ryan Hathaway joining us on our hotline. Uh, what's going on, Skipper? What, what are you up to, man? You, you guys going to play some baseball today, or uh, what's going on? Not today. Uh, we were rained out here and kind of snowed out here, so it's not looking good for today, but hoping maybe tomorrow we can, we can get something in. Well, Travis was just talking a lot about you guys got great pitching, hitting. You got the senior leadership. You break it down for us because you see these guys every single day. What makes this group collectively so special? Well, having nine seniors is important, I think, on any team. When you have nine, nine older players that have been in a lot of different situations that have played a lot of games for us, I mean, that, that experience has been, a big, has been a big factor early on. And like you said, with pitching, I'm having two guys that, you know, can go a complete game if we need them, and having a couple guys that we can bring out of the bullpen is important. So, you know, pitching and defense have really been the big, the big factors for us early on as far as, you know, sitting where we're at right now. 
Yeah, sitting at number two right now in the state rankings, you were just number one. You guys talk that much about that, or is that just for us media folk? Uh, a little bit. I mean, it's it's good motivation to, to see where you're at, see where you stack up with, with the rest of the teams. And, you know, you, you got to – You've got to keep winning. I mean, that's important, obviously, to stay up in the polls. Um, we dropped a tough one to the sales this week. So, as expected, you know, we dropped down to number two. But to still be up there, one, two, and even, you know, in the top ten, I think is it's good recognition for our program and for, for our guys. And I think it is a good motivating factor as far as just having that motivation to continue to keep playing well. A lot of coaches, players, poker players and stuff, they'll have phenomenal careers or seasons or whatever, but they'll always say that it's the losses that they remember the most. Are you dwelling a little bit about that loss to the cells, or would you say your top memory so far that you've been thinking about has come from a big-time performance, a, a nice win? Well, for me, I'm still kind of dwelling on the on the, the sales game. Um, you know, I didn't think we played as sharp as we needed to to win that night and they they play better than we did but you know we made some mistakes and there's a lot of things that we walking away from that were good teaching moments and things that we can continue to improve on because you know they're a good baseball a good baseball team and those are the type of teams that we're going to run into here when we get into the tournament and just got to continue to clean things up and and learn from some of the mistakes we made the good news, though, is that outside of conference didn't factor at all into the KMAC standings where you guys, you're right up there already clinching a share, but you can take it outright with a win against Centerburg. Would you say that that was the expectation all along heading into the season with those nine seniors and just knowing what you already had coming back? Yeah, we felt like if we played well that we would be, you know, obviously in the hunt um, at the end of the season. and. You know, there were some tough teams in the KMAC. Having to beat Northmore twice in one week was, was tough um, with what they have going on up there. And, you know, we happened to get East Knox early on in the season. So, you know, we felt like if we played well that we'd be in the hunt. And, you know, we, we set ourselves up here, obviously, to, to clinch it. But we still got three games here to play. But, you know, we, we feel good about where we're at as far as KMAC. Give me some insight about yourself and how you perceive your job. Would you say that you're more of a kind of keep it loose type of skipper or you like to be a little bit more disciplined or do you try to find a fine line and try to scale it right in between? I, I would go with that fine line. I mean, I think you, you've got to have that discipline and, and our practices have been a little more intense this year as far as kind of focusing on the little things and trying to be disciplined. But at the same time, you know, you can't you can't play tight. You've got to have these guys out there and, and, and playing a little bit loose and having fun. So I think we do a good job of, as far as coaching staff of, of towing that line between, like you said, being loose and, and being, you know, on them every single pitch. I think I think we do a good job of finding that balance. Players always have a lot of superstitions. What about you as a coach? Do you head into game day and there's anything that you, you got to wear or eat or do to ensure that, you know, all the victory favors from the sports gods are going to be coming your way? Uh, a lot of it I base on our pregame. Um, I can kind of tell, you know, where we're at mentally. So we may have to do a little bit of stuff. Um, you know, once we take pregame, I can kind of tell where our guys are mentally. So we may have to talk through a couple of different things. I can't give you all my, all my, um, you know, secret things I like to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of knock on wood type guy. You know, if somebody says something to Doug out, like, Oh, we're going to strike this guy out. I'm one of those guys that, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to jinx ourselves when it comes to those things. Yeah. Well, I've got the ultimate jinx right here. Oh, Travis Berardi, the, the announcer jinx in this guy. I mean, they're, they're, they're tied together. Like I get Mary. that out of the way early in basketball games, just so <laughs> it doesn't hurt. But uh, coach, uh, we just talked about this last year. You guys were so close. Uh, you had just had a tough defensive game against Edison that ended up, you know, falling, and I believe it was extra innings. And then you saw what Edison did the rest of that season, becoming state runners-up. Is that kind of what the chip on your shoulder for those nine seniors coming back, that, hey, we were that close, but we have everybody coming back, and we have the chance to maybe make it to where they were? Yeah, that's something that we've talked about, it seems like, every week is, is you know, if we can do something different in that game, if we can make a play here, if – you know, we can do something different. Um, you know, maybe that outcome's different for us. So that's something that we've been on them. It seems like every week, every practice is, you know, handling those little things and and being in those situations to where when you get back there again, you know, we feel like we practice it or we've done it in games and 
it doesn't come as such a shock when we get there again. Um, and really, it's just wanting, you know, wanting the ball hit to you. And I think with having nine seniors, it's a little bit different um, than having underclassmen out there. You know, this is it for them. So balls hit to them. Let's make a play and, and let's just, you know, close that game out the way we should have closed it out the last time we played. And not only that, uh, we were just talking pitching. It gets you far far mm -hmm. in the tournament. We know what Kay Carpenter has to offer, but then you saw mm -hmm. what Mast was able to do against North War, a, a one nothing complete game shutout against them as well. Just uh, how important is it for you guys to not only have a good one-two, but then maybe a couple other guys that can come in and get you some big outs? Yeah, Ben is a guy that, that has worked um, all offseason as far as pitching-wise, um, you know, trying to be that number two guy that we can rely on because when we brought him into that Edison game, you know, he kind of walked away – um, that feeling like he could have could have done something different. So he's a guy that really took that game and, and motivated him through the summer and, and all fall and winter. So he's put in a lot of work, and he's a guy that obviously we're going to depend on to make a long tournament run. And we've got guys that we feel like if we need to bring him in as far as relievers, um, we have guys that we feel like can come in and throw strikes and, 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 and close if we have to go there. So what's going down today then? So obviously you're supposed to be playing a game, uh, didn't happen, but what are you and the guys up to? Well, we're practicing. You can hear the, the uh, football team in the background here. They're, they're changing out. But uh, right now we're, we're in the cage hidden, and, and we'll go in the gym and, and try to get some more situational stuff done and, and make sure arms are feeling good here for the next couple of days. But um, the guys are getting after it. That's, that's the thing with, with having nine seniors. You know, it's not a – you don't have a lot of days where they want to roll in and wear shorts and just kind of hit for an hour and get out of here. They're they're motivated to come in here and, and get better, and that's what I like about them. Yeah, you got a veteran group, you got a mature group, coach, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're still high school kids. So we'll let you get out of here, yeah. go check on them, make sure everything's okay there in the school, and that uh, it's going to still be upright at the end of the day. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, coach. I right, appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, just looks like. Kind of the, the DNA of the, the coach and the team, they're all tied together. And the yeah. talent, it's its undeniable. They, they knew heading into the season that they had what they kind of brought into football, what they had in basketball. Sometimes you just got that run. You got that class. They've been playing with each other. And you got some cats that all care about one another. Uh, Freddieville, man, that's thats the place right now in the KMAC for sure. Yeah, and I mean, even before the season, I was there at Elida for that Edison loss. And you just knew coming, you know, coming back here that – this is probably one of the favorites in the state coming into this season, just what they have coming back, and they, they've shown it so far. Uh, just the one loss. I think, actually, he, he, he's still you know kind of hurting about that, the sales loss, but it's a good thing. It's a non-conference hmm. loss. So, that I mean, it doesn't hurt the KMAC, but sure. it also it's a wake-up call. You know, you have some teams that they like to go undefeated, you know, like Coach Sheldon and his squad. He doesn't want to lose games. But sometimes those losses, especially later in the season, help you out because it's a wake-up call that, hey, we're good, but we can still drop a game here or there. So it, it, it's not that bad, but they'll, they'll have a chance. Uh, they got Highland coming up at home. Yeah. A win there, that probably jump, uh, puts them back into the consideration for number one. But I was just looking also at the, the state rankings. One and two, they're number two. They're almost 100 points ahead of the third-place team in the state. That's how good those two teams are at one and two. So it, it, you, you can tell the respect despite the one loss that a lot of people think this is a good team and has a chance to go far in the tournament. Yeah, they'll definitely be the number one seed in, in their, oh, easily, their district. Easily There's district. no question about this is, that. This is one of those cases where in the for the district draw where nobody's going to want to play them. Mm -hmm. you, you'll probably see the two lowest seeds playing if they decide to take the bye. You know, sometimes coaches want to play that first game, but you'll see a very low-seeded team probably want to go up against them. Well, speaking of tournament draw, the ladies on the yes. softball side, they already know their outcome. It went down just yesterday, figuring out who's going to be stacking up next to who and what the first-round matchups are, Trav. So you are Mr. Bracketology here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you take over here, and let, let's begin with the uh, with the – Big schools in Division Two. Yes, what do you got? the good old Division Two Willard District. And just remember, Clear Fork, they're now in D3. So that's one team. You know, they, ah. they got district runners up last year. But uh, you, you got a team that this week, the number five team in the state of Ohio, the Madison Lady Rams. They were number one before dropping two tough losses to Division One Mount Vernon. Uh, but they've bounced back. They are the one seed. They'll take on the winner of Norwalk and Sandusky Perkins. Now, this might be a little bit of a, a sneaky team. Perkins, they knocked off Ontario in a non-conference game 
earlier this year. So they, you know, you never know what could happen. I know uh, Coach Snow said that Ontario had a really bad offensive game against them, and a couple things didn't go right. But you never know. Uh, although I think you know Coach Nicewander, he knows his, he he has his team ready and raring to go there. But that's uh, Madison would take on either Perkins or Norwalk, and then the winner getting Clyde or Shelby. Shelby having a pretty decent year in the MOAC. They just dropped their first conference loss before the Wendy's. It was to Ontario, so those two teams fighting for it. But Shelby is six seed. They'll take on Clyde. They took the buys, so they will face each other in a sectional championship game with the winner playing Madison in that district semi. Then on the bottom, as always, Bellevue. They're the two seed. They'll take on either Lexington or the final seed in Mansfield Senior. That game at Bellevue, and then the winner gets Ontario Vermilion. That's going to be quite the dis district semifinal matchup. For sure. Uh, not trying to overlook Lexington or Vermilion for Ontario and Bellevue, but Bellevue, Ontario, in a district semifinal, that's always, you know, you always get the good matchups there. But I, I think you and I are, are rooting for that Madison, Ontario. And part it seems two. like in this Division II district, typically there aren't big upsets. The top dogs usually shine through and get into that final four with an opportunity to move on to regional. So when you look at these teams and some of the different stud athletes that they have, Travis, is there any like one player that stands out that you think could be the ultimate difference maker? We know Madison, they've got great uh, hitting uh, up and down the, the middle of that lineup. Ontario too, everybody's back on that roster. Yeah. Shelby's having a phenomenal season. Wh who's the big game changer in here in your opinion? I, there's so many. I mean, Snow, Frazier, Mullins, Home run, home run, home run. Yeah, like, back all to back three homer against lineup. Madison in that game too. Right. But then you also have that lineup from Madison, like you said, Bree Bowles at first base. She's the power hitter. Not only that, but she's the reliever too. She can come in and get you some big strikeouts as well. And she's just uh, a big personality. Yeah. Love her. Absolutely. Oh yeah, so great. But yeah, so the, the, I, that's the only two that I, I can see right now. I don't know much about Bellevue, but you know they always have some players. But uh, it's. I wouldn't be surprised that there is a high-scoring affair if Madison and Ontario were to meet once again. Uh, Ontario won some payback, too, after that. They had a big 7-2 lead, lead mm. going into the sixth, and then Madison woke up and got the win. But um, I, I can't name just one or two players in this because Madison and Ontario both have so many pieces that, you know, if it, it's a shame that both those teams are in the same district because I think both of them – could not only win a district, but make it far in the regional as well. I mean, coaches have already given Madison the respect, naming them the number one team in the state. All right, let's flip the script now. Let's check out uh, Division Three Shelby and see some of the matchups that are going to be going down in the first round, the second round, potentially, after the matchups there in the sectional semifinals. Trav, uh, break this one down for us. Well, you got Huron out of the SBC. They are the number one overall seed. They'll take on either Cyrus or Willard at their place in a sectional championship game. Uh, Upper Sandusky, Margareta, last year's district champ, and then district runner-up Colonel Crawford as the three seed. Uh, but the matchup I'm looking forward to, and it's on your bottom far right, it's Ashland Crestview and Clear Fork, the winner playing Colonel Crawford. Like I said, Clear Fork dropping down from Division Two this year. Uh, they've, been, they've had a pretty good season. And then Crestview, kind of surprising that they got a six seed. They had some high hopes. They have a really good pitching squad. They have some hitters as well. But the winner of that matchup, I think, has a chance of making it you know, far. But Colonel Crawford also playing with a chip on her shoulder. They thought they could win a district championship last year, but Margareta pulled it out late. Uh, that's a big matchup. Uh, Winford Edison will take on – that winner will take on Margareta. And then also Upper Sandusky will face either Galleon or West, Western Reserve. I wouldn't be surprised those top – the one, two, and four seeds moving on the districts, but it's that, it's that winner of Clear Fork and Crestview. I think will give Colonel Crawford a, uh, you know, a fight for their money. This is, I like that a lot. That that's going to be what's determining getting on into that final four within the district. That that is definitely going to be some fun matchups there to kick off the softball tournament, Trav. Uh, more Division Three action. Let's go down to the central part of the state. Uh, break down some of these early round matchups and tell me who you think the favorite might be in here so there's a it's a k-max sectional northmore taking on fredericktown at the castle that's on the that's a week from today at five o'clock the winner takes on centerberg and those those lady trojans they are good 
they are the favorite in this district because once again you have the multiple they have central one and central two so the top seed is not even in this district but west jefferson at the bottom of the bracket you see them on the bottom right they'll take on either bishop reedy or johnstown northridge uh they're the two seed but centerberg you know K-Mac, you never know in that K-Mac. Uh, I think Centerberg knocked off Northmore by one. Uh, you have Freddie Berg as well. Some close games. Fredericktown just knocked off North uh, Hillsdale over the weekend, wow. three to two. So, Big you win. know, Fredericktown also, they were a regional finalist last year. Centerberg losing to Cardington in a district championship. Northmore making a district semifinal. So three teams that have a chance of fighting each other. And I, I just think it's pretty cool that you have an all K-Mac sectional. So we will have a K-Max squad playing in a district semifinal there. Uh, the winner, though, would take on either North Union. It's pr it's probably going to be the four seed, North Union. They take on Tree of Life Christian, who's the 15 seed, or Utica, the 17 seed. And down at the bottom of the bracket, Elgin and Pleasant playing each other. Elgin, the seven seed. Pleasant, the 20 seed, would get most likely West Jefferson. But Centerburg, I think they got – they have a chance this year, too. There's so many good teams in our area. I say this every year, but there's some legit squads – that can make some noise. We might be working well into June this year, Brian. That's always the hope and goal for us is to follow one of these journeys and, and see who, who can have either that Cinderella journey or one of the top dogs like you're talking with the Centerberg and see if all that talent plays out on the field when it gets into tournament time, which always so exciting because you can be one and done mm -hmm. at any time. Yep. One bad one pitching bad, performance. Yeah. Five errors could cost you a chance at a re you know, things like that. But uh, it's those teams that, they have that veteran leadership. That's why uh, also I'm so high on Fredericktown baseball, nine seniors. It's huge. But you have the players. I mean, Centerberg, their best player, she's a sophomore. Can she continue to show out and, you know, get into the big the big stage and things like that? But uh, we'll just have to find out. That's why they play the games. But I I'm very high on the Centerberg Lady Trojans this year. All right. More D3 action. Move on to Wellington now and see some of the teams going to be participating there in – there are the Hillsdale Lady Falcons, Final Four bound a season ago. So this is a very interesting district because Hillsdale up from Division 4 to 3, Keystone and Triway down from Division 2 up to 3. Keystone got the number one seed, Triway with three losses. They have the two seed, but they're in the other district. There's two districts on this. The winner's although those two districts would not meet until a regional championship game. There's, I think, five Northeast districts. So Hillsdale, Tuslaw, Keystone, this one would face another bracket, and then Triway would face somebody else as well. But Hillsdale, the number three seed, uh, they'll take on the winner of Columbia Station. Columbia or Warrensville Heights, that's on the 11th, so 10 days from now at 5 o'clock. And then they, get, they would get quite the match. Maslin Tuslaw, four seed. Wayne Dale, a team that they'll see at the end of the regular season, the 18 seed. Uh, Tuslaw gave Triway a very tough test this season. Then in the on the bottom of the bracket, uh, Keystone, they either face Clearview or Wellington, 13 20 matchup. Uh, also, Northwestern, a team that got a tough victory over Hillsdale. They're the five seed. They're at the bottom. They'll take on either Cuyahoga Heights or Trinity, the 9 22 matchup. Uh, Hillsdale and Keystone faced each other on a Saturday two weeks ago. Keystone walked off in the eighth inning, 3-2. So that, that could be quite the district championship game. But also you have Tesla in there that fought Triway hard. So a lot of big-name teams in this one. Uh, it's going to be – if the winner of this district will be battle-tested for the regional. I'll say that. Hillsdale, you know how high I am on those Lady Falcons with what they have coming back and the pitching that they have. But it's going to be quite the test for them. Yeah, that's three powerhouses right there in just one yeah. district. Three teams that you typically expect to be at Akron playing with a chance to move on to the cha the championship game. So, my gosh, like uh, how much fun is this one going to be? Oh, oh, absolutely. But also for those three big-time teams, one of them is not going to make it into even the district championship round, a team that you consider to be a state championship contender. That's nuts. Yeah, well, it's, it's those OHSA rules about out of uh, – out of area students coming in and all that stuff it, it was supposed to be for the private schools but all the private schools do want to say no you can't come in because we are at our limit so even though it was supposed to be a rule to keep those private schools to the right division they're at it, it's not and it's moving a division four team like hills down a couple division two teams up to d3 so uh, uh you know how i gripe about the uh those rules that they have for numbers and ohsa and all that stuff but we're, we'll talk about that some other time this is yeah, quite the district. Three 
state contenders, only one will survive. All right, let's check out the Division Four Galleon bracket now, Trav. And uh, you see we got Monroeville playing at home. It's always fun to be on your home surface. And then other teams like South Central and then also New London having a resurgent nice season. Yeah, New London, the one of the top three teams in the Firelands Conference. I think they do finish second this season. They're the two seed at Monroeville. You always see Monroeville there fighting with, you know, when the Lady Cubs and Lucas had that run for three, four years. It was them and Monroeville fighting each other in that district semifinal or district championship at Shelby. But, uh, yeah, Monroeville have had a phenomenal season once again. Uh, they get either Buckeye Central or Mansfield Christian, the 6-10 matchup at their home 10 days from now. Uh, winner would get Plymouth or Crestline. Plymouth, another sneaky squad. I believe Plymouth mm. knocked off Clear Fork in the MVD uh, a few weeks few weekends ago so that would be a, a quite the matchup and again a lot of firelands conference teams in here so these teams have seen each other at least twice so far this season uh looking at the bottom of the bracket south central the three seed taking on either the winner of lucas or saint paul lucas a five seed uh saint paul is seven and then you have new london taking on seneca east out of the northern 10 the two nine matchup uh new london monroeville the two favorites to make it there but don't count out south central or plymouth yeah, a lot of familiarity in there, and I always go back and forth in my head, is that an advantage for the better team or the higher-seeded team or for the undervalued team? I, I don't really know. I I think that it just more relies on your coaching and what you do with that information and how you feed it to your players. Like, hey, we already have the data. We know what it looks like when we line up against specific batters, when we do this in the field. So... Uh, might just shake out to who's better prepared heading into the game. Yeah, uh, it's it's your starting pitcher having an off night. You never know. You know how to you know take advantage of that and whatnot. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. There's no Hillsdale in Division Four this year either. So. Yeah, I know these teams are all real excited about that. Yeah. Uh, let's break down one more Division Four bracket in New Regal, and tell me, Trav. Uh, what do you see the potential here for Carrie Baby? They're the number two seed. And then also Tiffin Calvert at the number three. Uh, Mohawk, number four. With those several teams right there, the, those three pack, what's the potential for them? Well, they got to go through Hopewell Loudon. That was a team that Hillsdale saw last year in a regional championship and needed to hold them off in the seventh inning mm -hmm. to make it to a state final four. So Hopewell Loudon, chip on their shoulder. They thought they should have won that game, but Hillsdale just made one more one or two more plays to get that they're the top seed uh they'll take on either the 10 or 11 seed the la the bottom two of the three seeds will face each other in macomb and arlington to face them mohawk uh a team that made a run last year as well uh they moved into this district now with hope all loud and they take on either new regal or van Lu, but they have tournament experience and then you do have carrie baby down there taking on either the six or the 12 in arcadia or Corey rawson uh and then calvert as well uh, the three seed, Kerry Calvert, that could be a very intriguing matchup in a district semifinal. Calvert gets the five or the seven, but with North Baltimore or Riverdale. But uh, yeah, Hope Allowed and Mohawk, interesting, very interesting. So you might have two really good district semifinal matchups there. Uh, yeah, I, I love district time of year because obviously geographically you're just so familiar with your opponents and there's a, a lot of little rivalries. Uh, some of them. You're not necessarily seeing them in the regular season, but you have tournament rivalries too. So you're looking at you know some of these teams that have probably met quite a few times over these last few years. Who's going to shake out at the top? Hope well loud and getting that number one seed. Mohawk may, maybe a little undervalued just because you I think have to look at past tournament experience and mm -hmm. what they've been able to do when they get in the postseason and, and that's a squad that they're in the Elite Eight quite a bit so definitely don't count out those Lady Warriors and uh, carry with that number two seed they are a scary dangerous team that you would probably expect to at least play for the right to get into that Elite Eight. Yeah and also uh, bracket we don't have but I do want to mention real quick uh the Lady Devils of Danville, they are number nine in the state rankings this week. They're the two seed in their district, Central District and D4. The number one seed, Mechanicsburg. Mechanicsburg is the number four team in the state. A Danville Mechanicsburg district championship could be something worth watching for down there in that district. Uh, Mount Gilead, a 12 seed there as well. And then Loudonville as well. They're in Triway's district. They're on the bottom of the bracket. I believe they're an eight seed Triway, the number two. So we could see a Triway Loudonville 
district final in Loudonville. They had they had some tests. They have a lot of players back from that district runner-up team that had Hillsdale on the ropes late at that Akron's Firestone Stadium in the district championship game. So they're battle-tested as well. A lot of teams. A lot a of lot good of teams. teams. And I do want to bring in our Hayden Gray over in the control room. He had a chance to see the Centerburg Trojans, Hayden. What, what, what are your thoughts on Centerburg? Can they make a run this year? I, I think they can. They've got a ton of youth, and I think that they're such well, you know, they've been so well coached and they faced some great opponents this season that have allowed them to get experience for the postseason, which is what you need. When, when you have springtime in Ohio and you're not playing as many games as you'd like to, you want some of those quality games. They've been able to have them. So, yeah, I think Sandberg can make a run. And then also, uh, I, we were talking about Clear Fork and Highland, the Fighting Scots on the baseball side in that, uh, in that MOAC. Uh, what are your thoughts on that possible Highland Clear Fork champion? Just like football. I had the Colts. You had Highland. The Colts ended up winning that one. That's right. What, are we are we going to get another championship uh, matchup here the last week of the season? I think we have to. Uh, you know, I, I haven't done my best homework and looked at the the other scenarios, but you've got to think it's going to come down to those two, and I sure hope it does because, uh, boy, what what a great battle it would be between two teams that we could hopefully you know get down there and see. Tell Homer we said hi. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's actually keep Hayden in here yeah. um, over there in Control Room Central, a.k.a. Duffland or uh, wherever, Springfield, wherever that's located. Uh, the Freddie Invitational, there was a lot of bad weather that went through this past weekend. Nevertheless, they decided to go ahead and compete out there. Some teams pulled out, didn't get to see a few squads that we are anticipating, though, Hayden. But uh, despite conditions just like this, we still had some crazy performances from some area athletes. Give me a breakdown of what you saw. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the meet still went on, and I think it's a good thing that they continue to still have it because the rain did slow down a little bit, but still it was definitely not an ideal night to run. But, uh, you know, Nathan Strebby, as you're seeing on the screen right now, decided that it was going to be a great night to break a few records as well. Uh, he set a personal record in both the 1600 and the 800. In the 800, he beat his own record from last year. And then in the 1600, he beat uh, the record formerly held by Crestviews. I'm trying to find his name. Jeff Gray, a 430-40. He beat it by three or seven seconds. So Jeez. Nathan Strebby, uh put on quite a show. On the girl side, um, you know, there were some good performances, but in particular that stuck out to me was Ashley Cockrell from Fredericktown and then Elsa Holm from Fredericktown as well. Cockrell just committed to Ashland University a little bit ago, and then uh, Elsa Holm won both the 1,600-meter and the long jump. So a couple of great performances from a couple of Fredericktown Freddies, but ultimately Mount Vernon would sweep the meet, winning both the boys and the girls. Probably one of the biggest schools, if not the biggest, competing in the meet, Mount Vernon. Was it just more strength in numbers for them to kind of get that victory? I think so, and they had a lot of kids. They had a lot of personnel go out and uh, earn points for them too. It wasn't just a few people. They just definitely, like you said, had a, a full team effort, um, nearly sweeping all the relays, and then just in the, the hurdles, the sprints, and in field events um, had different athletes taking home first and second in pretty much every event on the night. And I know it was a bummer, Hayden. There's a few teams that dropped out due to the weather. They didn't yeah. want to have their play, their uh, athletes running in it. Yeah, uh, Philo, Clear Fork, and Highland uh, decided that they were not going to compete in it anymore. Um, you know, I guess if if you're close like Highland and Clear Fork, maybe you don't want to risk injury. And it wasn't that long of a drive, but uh, Philo, that's a long drive. So I uh, kind of wish we would have seen them still compete, but. Yeah, uh, a couple teams decided not to, but other than that, it was a pretty good event because so many different teams got to come out to this, and in track and field, you don't get the opportunity to really replan something. You know, it's pretty much one and done when you're talking about 10-plus teams uh, all in the same place at the same time. I saw that graphic pop up for your awesome new show. Um, just tell any of the athletes or parents who may be watching right now how they can be a part of on the right track if they have a not just a a victory or a second place mm -hmm. or a third place they don't even got to be on the podium but they had their best performance so far yeah so uh i touched on it on the first episode so many of you got in submissions which is awesome i want to see as many as possible every single week 
Now, we're only going to choose five to vote on, but to get there, we got to have you submit them. So um, we have a post out today. Right now, it's on our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter. You can you know, submit yours. I've even had a few come in via Facebook Messenger, whatever works. I will find it if you get it to me, but uh, I just need to know who you are. So whether it's you yourself or your athlete or a coach, it's one of your runners or throwers or, or field event athletes, uh, just let me know who you are, what grade you're in, the school you compete for, and then let me know what event you set a new personal record in. Um, if you know your former personal record, include that as well. And then I always leave it out there. Um, a lot of people did a nice job of submitting a picture uh, with their personal record of their athlete. Uh, you can also include a video. I had a couple of those as well um, for people who did set some records. So any of those ways, get those in by now. And then at 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday, we'll stop looking at those only so that I have time to get everything ready for Thursday's episode. But, yeah, it doesn't matter what event, whether it's – field event, running event, and it doesn't matter what place you placed in. So uh, you have the opportunity to get those in now, and we'd like to see as many as we can again. And you can also vote right now as well on the ones that we highlighted in the first episode. And a lot of comments are coming in. Yeah. So yeah. You, if, if you're getting in your PR to Hayden to be on the right track, you're going to be seen. Uh, people are going to notice and uh, see what, what it is that you just did. So uh, phenomenal job, man. I think that this thing's going to catch like a wildfire. Uh, already is right now, but as the weeks go along, it, these are going to keep trickling in. But, hey, action photo or it didn't happen, got to get that picture in there when you make your submissions, guys. Or the video, too, hey. I, I, I like that, too, if they actually have a video of the performance. That works. Yeah, whatever works. Uh, if not, we, we can go looking for something, but it's easier when you submit it with your stuff so we know for a fact it's you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you, Control Room. Uh, let's uh, change topics now, Trav, and we'll, we'll actually probably welcome Hayden back in on this and get some of his perspective. But NFL Draft went down over the weekend. Uh, I did watch the first three picks on Thursday night. I just wanted to make sure there was a lot of rumors about, and conversation about, about the third pick? Stroud how about Texans dropping? Trading back in to get that was interesting two too. studs, one on offense, one on defense. I that, like it. Yeah, uh, using those, uh, those picks at the Browns. Gave them for uh, yep. Mr. Deshaun <laughs> Watson. A lot of draft capital out there in Houston. But speaking of the Browns. Yeah, uh, what do you think? Uh, it Really unusual for us to not have a top 10 pick, let alone not a first round pick, let alone not a first or second round pick. So it took a while before my interest really got peaked. But this is who oh, they ended care. up taking. You were down at the beach. I don't know. Uh, well, you know, it was... <laughs> It wasn't you don't think bad. you cared if you had the first two say. rounds. You're on the beach anyway. Um, but when I did start paying attention, uh, the uh, Cedric Tillman wide receiver pick out of Tennessee, at first I was like, man, you know, we, we just got those two acquisitions during the offseason. We traded away some draft capital to get in some guys like Marquise Goodwin. Uh, do we really need a wide receiver? And then I started watching the highlights and looking at uh, some of the things that this guy does. So I love the six foot three frame plus about 215 pounds he bulked up heading into the combine and all the highlights I saw was not only can he go snatch the deep ball but also in the red zone he's got the height he can be a big time target now they get to the defensive tackle too that's like a small bulldozer 340 pounds I haven't heard his name pronounced yet so I may butcher this but I think it's Psyche Ica from Baylor I don't know, but when I watched the highlights, too, I was drooling a little bit about the potential. The Browns last season got gashed up the middle. We were so good on the outside of the line. In the middle, we got terrorized, so we need a big dude like that for Jim Schwartz probably to plug in, fill some holes, and just take on a couple of bodies. That's what we need, okay? Uh, but the two Ohio State picks, okay, the Browns had this thing going for years and years and years until they ended up making a couple of bad picks with some Ohio State guys, and now we got Denzel Ward, and we're all happy about him. But they, they just would never draft Buckeyes. So not only did we take two Buckeyes, we took two guys that basically played right next to each other for the last couple of years. Uh, Dewan Jones, probably the biggest guy in the draft. G ginormous. Mm -hmm. He's like six yeah. foot nine, yeah, almost he's, 400 he's pounds. He's huge. I cannot believe that man 
drifted all the way into the fourth round. Just on size alone, that value, it's going to be tough for any defensive lineman to get a look around him. And then uh, Luke Whipler as well, the center from Ohio State. That's a bit of an interesting choice, but I know it was their, I think, a seventh round choice. Maybe it was a sixth round choice because uh, Ethan Postick, he, he played so well last year. I think kind of surprised everybody winning that starting job with all the centers going down, 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 down like they did, uh, tumbling one after another. So... My only concern for the Browns were no linebackers, but with the picks that we did have, I was more or less, from uh, reading the, the few articles that I had, uh, pretty impressed with what they were able to do. You can't give them like this huge high grade because we just didn't have that type of impact here. But I think it is cool to bring in a couple of Ohio State guys that that's going to be instant comfortability, at least when they're in training camp, to get acclimated to the next level. We get the big run stuffer in the middle, and then we get a top flight wide out. But going into the draft, I felt like linebacker was our biggest place of need. We didn't get any. So uh, I hope Andrew Barry's got a plan in place for this trying to acquire a veteran or something. Um, but that's the Browns. So I don't really know what grade to give them. I, I, I see a lot of people out there, you know, the, the experts giving them like a, like a, a C or something. That, that's fine. That works. But you Steelers fans, you're pretty high on oh, what you guys just goodness. did, right? You, you got some Everybody, big names. Even, even the, the big heads at ESPN and all the other sports networks loved it. Mm. I absolutely loved it. Omar Khan taking over Con in the last year and just – Oh, loved it. Loved it. For the fourth time ever in draft history, the Steelers traded it up to get somebody. They traded it up to get Broderick Jones. There we go. We need that offensive lineman. Check it off the list. Number 14 overall. And then we gave up uh, Chase Claypool, who wasn't really doing that much last year for us. We traded him to the Chicago Bears to get their first pick in the second round. Who do we get? Oh, good old Joey Porter Jr., That's a corner from pick. Penn State. Check that off because we needed a cornerback. Uh we also, in round number two, picked up somebody I'm very excited about is uh, Keanu Benton, defensive tackle, Wisconsin. There's video from last year that uh, one T.J. Watt was at Wisconsin's Pro Day, and he's over there talking to him, giving him some tips on what to do. So you have T.J. Watt, and then you have Keanu Benton on two sides of the ball. Oh, quarterbacks, beware. That is just a great one-two punch. And then, because we traded up in that first round with the Patriots, we lost our uh, our fourth round pick. Well, what do we do? We trade back with Carolina so they can move up in the third round, and we get that pick pretty much right back. Uh, we traded back to get 93rd overall in the third round. We get Darnell Washington from Georgia, who was in the top 50 in most people's mocks, but because of some injury concerns uh, with his knees. But I don't care. He is a beast. He is huge. He can be one of those run blockers. Uh, I mean, our tight end room is just phenomenal right now with him adding on That's to good because your wide receiver room leaves a lot to be desired. Huh? I'm not sure who Kenny Pickett's going to throw to if he can get his hand around the football what? the center. Deontay Johnson, Allen Robinson, George Pickens. Who did we just trade for I for mean, nothing? I mean, my goodness. Uh, hey, yeah. we're glad if Steelers Nation's happy <laughs> with that room, then we're happy too here in Browns country. Oh, well, man. anyway, that, that fourth round pick that we got back was Nick Herbig. The linebacker from Wisconsin. And then we just finished things out. Uh, uh, Corey Trice, cornerback from Purdue. Uh, and then we got another offensive lineman in the comp pick from the L.A. Rams in Spencer Anderson. We filled every hole that needed to be filled. A couple offensive linemen, some secondary help, and then, you know, Herbig, the two big players from Wisconsin, Benton and Herb. I just absolutely love A plus to our staff there in Pittsburgh. I am very excited to see what we can do. And I know Hayden, you are as well, since you are now live on location. Yeah. You, you, ha you handed stadium. out A pluses there from what's your stadium called now? A 84 lumber or what? what? It's AccuSure. A AccuSure. I don't know. I mean, I know the Browns were just battling, trying to figure out how to rename the factory of sadness again this year. They settled on something, but uh, did we, I didn't, I haven't seen yet. Is it just factory of sadness? No, I, I don't believe so, Adam, but thank you. But uh, I mean, I'm biased. Of course, I'm going to hand out a good grade, but I did. I, I really do feel, uh, for once, that we made some moves that really, to other people, seem boring. But that's what the draft's for, to plug the holes. And it's and we took the obvious. highest player available multiple times, too. People right. just skip, skipping over, oh, well, his knee might be hurt or anything. Why not take a chance in the late rounds? And that's what we did with most of the players. We filled our needs. And finally, I can say we did what we needed to do in a draft. Yeah. Good job, guys. Uh, I, I haven't read no mock drafts, 
uh, anywhere. I, I've got very limited information. So Steelers fans are very happy with mm -hmm. what they did. What about the Bengals and Ravens? Did they make any sneaky good picks? So, did they move up, get some exciting players? Well, the Bengals, I think what they did was oh. they – started getting players that are going to replace some of these other players that their contracts are expiring. They're getting old. Uh, their first pick, DN from Clemson, Miles Murphy. He, I heard he has been a beast there for Clemson. Uh, but then they got DJ Turner from Mich Michigan with their 60th pick cornerback to help that secondary. And then they got Jordan Battle from Alabama, that safety from right. yeah the tied 95th overall. So they're trying to lock up that secondary that kind of got burnt last year by some teams. They did pick up another uh, wide receiver threat, threat too, Charlie Jones from Purdue. Uh, Buckeye fans probably know him from when they played. And they also got uh, Andre Losevius, a wide receiver from Princeton. I don't, I don't know. He's, he's smart. Sounds like a Princeton yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Chase Brown, running back from Illinois, they picked up as well. They went punter, Brad Robbins from Michigan, and DJ Ivy, the corner from Miami. So they're trying to sure up that secondary. They got a couple of young uh, running back wide receivers as well, and they got a punter because, you know, hey, punting, that's a big thing. It's getting Part uh, of the game. Hey, back. There, are, there are people too. I did read, and is this true, did Antonio Brown indeed sign with the Ravens? Is that real? Well, yeah, that's yeah. Getting to Baltimore, though, uh, their biggest acquisition was locking down Lamar, and then yeah, that's right, he got paid. He got paid, and then they rewarded him with the twenty-second overall pick, getting Zay Flowers, as well. So that's uh, that's going to help out their wide receiver group. Then they went uh, with some defensive players. Their round three pick was Trenton Simpson, a linebacker from Clemson, uh, Tav Tavius Robinson from Ole Miss outside linebacker, and then they went uh, corner. Uh, Caillou Blue Kelly from Stanford, a corner. Hmm. And then in the back end, they tried to help out the offensive line. That it's been wearing down here in the last couple of years. They really haven't had a great offensive line. 199th overall, they got somebody from Oregon. I'm not going to even try it. Uh, Malizia Amave Lu Lualu. You said you were going to try. I, I've been and try. You I'm, went after it anyway. I still went. Yeah, big big the tackle from Oregon, there. big tackle from Oregon, and then Andrew Voorhees, a guard from USC. So they tried shoring up that offensive line for uh, for the quarterback, so he doesn't get his leg broken once again. But um, uh, Bengals, Ravens tried, you know, shoring up some pieces that for pl players that are going to be leaving here soon, and some other players just to shore up, but. It sounds like all the AFC North teams, minus the Browns, just had a lot of holes to fill. Mm -hmm. So hopefully those draft picks work out all the way around. Yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily rooting for all that to happen, but I would like it to be another competitive division. AFC North, I think we're starting to be a little bit of a cornerstone right now in the league. As long as Browns can pull their weight, it seems like they're in the conversation. Well, with that, extra, for, for with that extra wild card spot, too. The whole, division, the whole division could make the playoffs if we could. And uh, I think oh, our Adam Thompson here. just signed with the Ravens as well because it seems like everybody's trying to sign with him right now. But uh, Yeah, I, I just saw a, a tweet. that AB, yeah, It might have been on Antonio Brown's account that said that he was Him and OBJ with the together. So, could you imagine? My gosh. That, that would be – Yeah, week, week four, him throwing his, his uh, jersey off and his pads and running into the locker room. I mean, but that'd be just great. from a you media know? perspective, I mean, that oh, is gold. My. They yeah. have those two and Lamar with, Lamar, with yeah. the head coach and everything that they got out there. Could be fun. Following Definitely. Lamar into the bathroom midway through a game, you know, like, mm. I don't know. Always football season, o OTAs and everything. They get started soon. The, yeah. The rookie camps, I – it's amazing what the NFL will do in terms of just getting the energy levels going yet again. Uh, it's exciting times. It's, uh, as soon as it's post-draft, that's when it starts heating up. We, we can start having these uh, fun conversations. Well, it's still baseball season, too. It is. Um, but that's not what I want to talk about next, Travis. I know. You, you I hate want to talk so. about a little bit of ice hockey yes. from last night. Good and grief. Did you watch those games? I did not get an opportunity to watch until the very, very end when tragedy actually struck in the Bruins Florida Panther game last night. Yeah. But I've been following along because my kid brother, he is a Bruins fan through and through, has oh. been since the day he was born, and they've been spoiled, okay? So don't feel too bad for him. Best ever no record. Oohs and oohs and groans and stuff. But they lose three straight games for the first time all season last night, allowing the Panthers to beat them on their home ice to move on to the second round of the NHL playoffs. So a lot of pundits today, 
on the different networks. We're talking about this perhaps being the biggest choke job all time in the history of sports for the playoffs. So it got me thinking a bit about it. I wanted to also get your perspective, Travis. This Boston Bruins team who won 65 games out mm -hmm. of 82 during the regular season. That's crazy. They were 43 points ahead of the Florida Panthers who just snuck in. Destroyed everybody all year long. Their yeah. goal differential was 127. They gave up just 177 goals all year. For them to lose three straight games and not even advance at all in the playoffs, is it the biggest choke job in professional well, sports? Well, not only history? that, they were down 2 nothing going into the – it was midway through the second. They scored Last a goal. Night. Then they tied it and took the lead. Florida didn't score until 59 thought. seconds left. So not only that, but they gave up a goal late, and then Florida I comes out. I think that plays into calling yeah. it a choke. Yes, the absolutely. They just had to hold on for a minute. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like another uh, NBA team blow that had a uh, record-setting year blowing a 3-1 lead. And that's, you know, that's the comparison that I wanted to make, and I wanted to pick that as the biggest choke job. But the Cavs are good. I mean, they weren't. They, the, it wasn't an eight seed. It wasn't. It wasn't Jimmy buckets in Miami knocking off. Giannis, but that he he was injured. You can't really call that a choke but job. That's, but that's the first round. Yeah, the Warriors at least got to oh, the yeah. championship, yeah. and they were one win away from biting the whole enchilada. And only need one in three to do it. Boston, and then you saw we had some highlights also of the Avalanche, the defending champions, to They're a second year team, to too. a second year team. So, uh, Bruins, it's, the Bruins, this, no, the is Bruins was choke job. Yes, that was, that was a that was a hot. I I don't know. You just have to go back and the, what are some choke jobs that you would you would the the put one in mind? that when I saw this that immediately came to my mind and I don't know that I saw anybody talk about this today. Do you not remember the Lightning like three years ago? They were the best team in the NHL. They almost set the record for most wins ever. Not only did they lose, but we swept them in the Columbus. Yeah, they had Jackets. to come and play the Blue Jackets, who was the eight seed. And again, just like the Panthers, we just barely got in by the skin of their teeth, and they beat them four straight games. So they didn't even win a single playoff game. To me, that felt like a big choke job where you can't even get over the hump for a game. Not not a game? You can't get one? The Bruins at least were right there a minute away, and then they melted down at the end. So that was one of the thoughts that came to my head along with the Warriors, but I don't think you can put them in that conversation because they at least won 15 games in the playoffs. They were no scrubs. Yeah. Uh, Indians up 3-1 in the World Series. But again, Indians made up it all the way on, to the up series. Up 3-1 on the Red Sox back in the early 2000s in the ALCS. Oh, yeah, that one was brutal. Was oh. that the 05? Mm. Because that they would have faced Colorado and probably would have won in four, and there's the World Series. But stuff like that. Um, Them's the breaks, man. Yeah, I, that, one, that one hurt pretty bad. Yeah. How about, speaking of Jimmy Buckets, how about um. Miami? Oh, look. Oh, okay. What, what about 2001 where a team sold their team and the very next year said team won a Super Bowl against the Giants? Mm. Baltimore. Well, God, no. uh, well uh, the fact that he brought up the Giants made me think of Tom Brady and the team that got all the way to the uh, championship game and then oh, lost yes. to them. But, again, they, they at least got to the Super Bowl. But to lose that game to Tyree, the Giants Tyree, with, David with, with Tyree. that crazy team that they had, that, that's that got to be in the mix. Yeah. That's probably top ten. Yeah. Or, well, Atlanta. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that, that one. Bad. That gives you the heebie-jeebies. But sometimes the sports gods, the, Tom Brady, he just has like a radar on him where they're just always trying to funnel all of the good juju his way. I don't know what it is, uh, but they just filled up Shanahan's head with now bad coaching retired, decision good one after another to? after another. They, they got to pick it? somebody. Who inherits the good juju? Maybe we can spread the wealth. We don't have to keep it all in one dynasty club or one person. Wouldn't that be nice? A little yeah. bit of parody? That would be nice, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it's basically the NFL, since Tom Brady came in, it's just every other year, Tom's winning. So there, there's got to be a new... Well, now it's a certain well, guy. Well, I guess, yeah, I forgot. His, his brother and wife love TikTok and stuff over in Kansas Shoot. City where the, that was. But Shoot, I forgot. Yeah, they've now he's it's already started. Win. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. good times. Hayden, good times. do you have any, any choke jobs that you want to talk about? I know Adam just gave you one. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we pretty much covered them all, but... I mean, I guess I would make the argument that uh, 
I feel like the Warriors do need to fall under being a choke job because I just feel like that team, because of all those wins that they had in the playoffs, Forced should not. Get they were KD not supposed to lose to the Cleveland Cavaliers no matter what. Now, had they went out and got KD and then yes. lost in the playoffs, right. that, that would have been would've monumental. Been, yeah. Well, that, that one would have been the most. That would have been the Mount Rushmore of choke jobs. Yeah. Well, that well, was a missed right corner that. three in game three of the NBA Finals from probably being a series. Yeah. You remember that one in Cleveland that you and I were in person for. If that goes or in. Or J.R. Smith rebound, not yeah. put back oh, away yeah, from making too. it a real series. Yeah. Oh. Bad memories. All, all, all these great feelings are coming back. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in the building for that one. That was, yeah. that was something. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and. Put some sunshine on this. Shall we? Yeah. Because uh, where Tom Brady is, I think, still living, I just made my way down Does there. Does he have a new girlfriend or something? Anything down I there? Hope I don't he He's probably got a couple. He's got options, at least, if he wants one. I don't know what Tom's really doing right now in, in terms of his social life. I, I don't think he likes to get out and be in the limelight. What's he going to do now? I mean, he has that podcast. TV. He's going to be on TV starting yeah. next year, right? With Fox? I think so, yeah. He's going to be Let's making see, more than anybody in the history because of. he needs more money, um, but yeah, okay. Well, it's not really about yeah, that. Just I being know. paid his value, and who, who better to hear about the quarterback in football than from the best of all time? Yeah. I think. I, yeah, I think Tom talks okay. He's got his own podcast. He's had his own radio show for a long time. Uh, the guy's gonna do okay. He's gonna be yeah. okay. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, let's get to the yeah, sunshine. Let's get to the workation here. So I know that my wife seems to think that you know I, I'm going out there. I'm at least getting some stuff done. It's not just how all much stuff. Other than when you were at the the facility getting your video, did mm -hmm. you actually do work like you said you were going to, or was it just too nice? I'm gonna take you through my timeline. Okay. So this is what happened. Okay. So it was approximately last Monday. I flew out to sunny Orlando, Florida. I instantly got off the jet. I went and I explored downtown. Not that nice, gotta say. It's not. Um, I, I not that many people out there. But then the very next day, I went out to this beautiful facility that has just been upgraded for uh, PepsiCo. And this is just a quick drone shot. There's my team inside. So much fun to work with these dudes. It's going to be the best video that I've made so far. I've done more than 20 of these things, but those guys were fun. Okay, I thought I was going to be working the next day. We didn't make First that happen slip. so much. We ended up out on the beach. I got my hair cut that morning by some dude named yeah, yeah, Cisco. Uh, that night we ended up, uh, this is rooftop out in Tampa Bay, phenomenal city to go walk around on so nice and then of course we had to get just a little bit more beach time out there when you're in Clearwater or at least when you're that close this is what I, I thought was so cool about area, Tampa Bradenton. there's just way too many beaches within close proximity not to get out there but Clearwater I think takes the cake so uh, you Siesta Key haven't the been the sands the haven't sands had a are beautiful to see. I really thought that it was cool the, the white sand but then the amount of shells seashells that are out there if mm. you're a young kid and you went out there well or me i was dude i, I had a big old collection i was looking there's a million within a five foot radius i don't know how that all works with the sea life and why they need to get rid of them and stuff well it also could have been from but, the hurricane getting pushed in up that way over this but it's summer still but cool still, oh it is oh, geez, so uh, great. to kind of rate my experience i've been to orlando florida more than five times now most of them was spent on the disney lot so that was my whole perception and what i knew and plus universal as well you got to give it two thumbs up it's basically its own existence yeah. out there they're, they're kind of their own little unique city even though i know DeSantos is going back and Done. forth with them they're thinking about picking it up and just moving it to texas or north carolina or something that's besides the it's, point disney's got too many lawyers they're going to come out on top of that but anyway. when you go venture downtown though and granted it was a monday night it, it was pretty dead it felt like there was some riffraff out there a, a decent amount of homeless so i wasn't that impressed with downtown orlando i'd maybe give it five stars out of ten i do like to go right around on the scooters and just kind of check out the scene it is okay a little bit dirty too yeah so i have family that lives in sanford it's about 25 minutes north it's right off of the uh was it ucf comp, uh campus up there by sure. the airport but it's nice up there but the cool thing about people that live in florida you can get yearly passes to universal and disney for cheap then it's yeah, My affordable uncle, Living in Sanford, he will he'll just decide he wants to go ride the Harry Potter roller coaster or something like that. He'll just drive down, ride a couple rides, go home, make it a couple hour deal out of it. I think that's pretty cool for people who live down there in Florida. But we also uh, when I was there last year in June for the summer, we went to an indoor an arena football game 
nice. in Orlando, but even driving around the streets down there, it's just it's nowhere you want to be caught. At Downtown's one in the not morning. great. It's not great. But then you go about 70 miles away into the Tampa area. That's beautiful. Vibrant. Everywhere downtown mm-hmm. was great. We went to a couple of different areas each night, and one of them, it, it, pretty much everyone's smoking cigars. I haven't smoked a cigar in a long time. I smoked one every single day that I was there because that's just the, the style. That's the, that's what they do. That's uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of Cubans mm-hmm. are out there, and uh, a lot of people that I couldn't – even have like perfect conversations with because there's a a, a lot of that too a, a lot of uh, Latin culture down there so uh, I, I would give Tampa the definitely two thumbs up like at least eight solid stars out of ten uh, they're really building up that downtown out there and it just seems like there's a lot of places to go and, and tons of sunshine so you can't beat that but then St. Petersburg that would be number one on my list of places that we went and visited that just has such an ultimate Florida beachy town and then the, the, the sand and everything like I said it, it, that's the spot that I, I would love to like take my family again I, I need to get back out to St. Pete's that that was the crown jewel of my little four-day excursion nice but I did do some work yeah and it was cold and gloomy and rainy up here so yeah cool, and now man. I'm back to it yeah, right in Snow Ohio so yeah that's a little bit of story time with me on my latest adventure and looking forward to to more coming up soon yeah. keep keep sharing with you folks Awesome. Yeah, so uh, what do you think, Control Room? Got anything else for the folks? <laughs> oh, Hayden Gray rubbing it in. He, he's living oh, a life now. I will have a better back background when I'm on a cruise ship on a Monday for the podcast. Oh, it's coming in June. Well, right there, Travis. So You're like less yeah. than two months away from that? Yeah, I cannot wait. All right, paid off. All-inclusive, too, so the drinks are going to be free as well. Um, but, yeah, Say, dude. actually leaving out of Port Canaveral, so out, out of the Orlando area, too. Travis is summer top five. Oh, that here we go again with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how how is the beach Coming life out soon. there, Hayden? Did you get enough sunscreen? I don't want you to get burnt like you were at the Wendy's last year. <laughs> I'm not answering your question, Travis. He's not interested. Looks like <laughs> Adam is coming through too. I don't know where he's going. Oh, because he's got on a green shirt, he's just showing off at this point. I see. <laughs> the things they do in the in the control room. Uh, all the fun's back it. there. Yeah, that's why we move Hayden back there. All the fun back there. <laughs> all right, Charles. I don't like West Virginia. Uh, got anything else for the folks at home before we wrap this thing up? Um, eh, sports-wise, my Pirates second best record in baseball, taking on Tampa Bay in St. Petersburg. Best record in baseball. That'll be something starting tomorrow. Ooh, I what the first night that I was in Tampa, um, we were at a uh, bar, a huge one, an outdoor one. They got a big boat and everything right outside of where the Rays play. Yeah, but Tropic then they Camp. lost at home for the first time all year. Oh, and then everyone yeah. came outside. We, we went down there specifically. We were like, man, as soon as the game ends, dude, the environment's going to be lit. You jinxed be jumping. Uh, I, hey, I, I guess I'll take credit. I, I was kind of the, the, the weird piece out there that they're not used to having. Yeah, it wasn't uh, so much as a fun crowd as we were expecting. Yeah. A lot of gloomy faces. It's like, you it's it's first one place. game out of 162. You're 20 and 4 overall. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Relax. It's going to be okay. Yeah, and also to just fulfill my weekly thing, West Virginia baseball, 12th in the country. Now they're moving on up 30, 30 mm. 3 and 11. They might be hosting the NCAA tournament. And everyone so cares go. about that. Absolutely. <gasps> had to get it in. That's our show. Keep the streak. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we got some games for you tomorrow, live yeah. and free right here on the OH. We're supposed Report. to have another guest, too. Two biggies. Yeah. Uh, Hannah Moore from Hills. What happened to you? She she jumped on for like five seconds. We were about to invite her in, and then I tried to text her and get her back, and uh, I don't know what they're, happened. They're so. busy getting ready for uh, for Norway. Hopefully tomorrow. That's yeah, a big. They, they got a big. We one. had we had that the top four teams in the WCAL, but Norway and Hills they were on top of the softball standings too. So it's a very important. Uh, both fields right there next to each other can have some important baseball and softball this week. So tomorrow night. Could, weather permitting, have a live stream for you of the softball game and then the same for the baseball matchup. We'll have a highlight for you guys tomorrow night. But for now, for tonight, we're done. Go home. And if you're already there, relax. Chill out.